Another term used in conjunction with the sine wave is the average value. The average value of the sine wave is the average height of the curve for one alternation of the sine wave. Remember, one alternation is only half a cycle. The average height of a sine wave is found to be 0.637 or 63.7% of the peak value. Therefore, to find the average value of a sine wave, you would multiply 0.637 times the peak value. If you know the average value of a sine wave, you must know the peak value, then you would divide 0.637 into the average voltage value. The average value of the AC wave is seldom used in the technician's line of work. Most of the time, voltage and current are specified in their effective value. The effective value of a sine wave is defined as that value which will produce the same heating effect in a resistor as would be produced by a given value of a direct current or voltage. The effective value of the sine wave can be thought of as the working value of the sine wave. The effective value of the sine wave is 0 .707 times the peak value. If you know the effective value of a wave and you need to calculate for the peak value, you simply multiply the effective value times 1.414. The 120 volts in your home is actually a sine wave voltage with an effective value of 120 volts. The peak value of this voltage is actually 169.68 volts. All AC voltmeters and current meters will read effective values unless otherwise stated. When we speak of an AC voltage or current, we mean its effective value. The wavelength of an AC sine wave is the actual physical length of one cycle in space. Wavelength is equal to the speed at which electric waves travel through space, divided by the frequencies in cycles per second. The electric wave will travel at the speed of light, which is approximately 186,000 miles per second, or 300 million meters per second. To calculate the wavelength of a wave in meters, you divide 300 million by the frequency in cycles. Stated mathematically, 300 times 10 to the 6th power divided by frequency equals a wavelength in meters, and 186,000 divided by frequency equals a wavelength in miles. The symbol for wavelength is the Greek letter lambda. For example, suppose we wish to find the wavelength of a radio station which operates on a carrier frequency of 1,000 kilohertz. Using the formula, wavelength equals 300 times 10 to the 6th power divided by the frequency, we learn the actual length of one cycle in space of this radio wave is 300 meters long. The wavelength of a TV station operating at 100 megahertz would be 300 times 10 to the 6th power over 100 times 10 to the 6th power, or 3 meters. The wavelength of a 60 cycle power line would be 300 times 10 to the 6th power divided by 60, or 5 million meters. As you have seen, the lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength. The higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Alternating currents are more complex than our direct currents. Therefore, more factors must be considered. One factor which makes the study of AC more complex is the matter of phase. Phase is a measure of time. It shows how one sine wave varies with respect to another sine wave of the same frequency. As we saw earlier, when two or more sine waves, either current or voltages, or both, are in the same phase, they pass through corresponding values at the same time. In other words, they both pass through zero at the same time, and they both reach their peak values at the same time. This continues to happen during each cycle. Here we see two sine waves which are 90 degrees out of phase. Notice that one sine wave has reached its peak value as the other sine wave is just crossing its zero voltage point. When we look at the waveform, we see that one sine wave started 90 degrees before the other sine wave. We could say that one sine wave is leading the other sine wave by 90 degrees, or we could state that one sine wave is lagging the other sine wave by 90 degrees. Either would be a correct statement. Here we see two sine waves which are 180 degrees out of phase. These two waves will go through their zero values at the same instant, but one is increasing in a positive direction while the other is increasing in a negative direction. To understand that there are a wide variety of phase relationships existing between two or more sine waves. 
Phase relationships can range from zero to 359 degrees out of phase. You may be wondering, under what conditions will the out of phase signals occur? Well, the answer to that question is an easy one. Any time a circuit with an AC voltage applied has capacitance or inductance or both in the circuit, there will be an out of phase condition which will exist between the voltage and the current. Here we see an AC generator connected to a capacitor with a graph showing the voltage wave and the current waveforms. If you notice, the current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. You will learn more about why this occurs when we discuss the capacitor. Here we see an AC generator connected across a coil. We also see a corresponding graph showing the phase relationship between the current and voltage for the coil circuit. As you can see, when an inductance is placed in a circuit, it will cause the voltage to lead the current by 90 degrees. We have already seen the phase relationship of the voltage and current in an AC circuit which contains only resistance the current and voltage were in phase. If the circuit contains a combination of resistance, capacitance, and or inductance, a wide variety of phase relationships may result. The amount of phase difference will be determined by the amount of reactance and resistance in the circuit. This is also called the circuit's impedance. Impedance is the total opposition that a circuit offers to the flow of alternating current at a given frequency. Impedance is measured in ohms and its symbol is the Greek letter zeta or Z. Impedance is equal to the square root of the resistance squared plus the reactance squared for a typical series AC circuit. Reactance, as you will learn, is the opposition that a capacitor or inductor has in an AC circuit. Reactance is measured in ohms, just like resistance and impedance. The value of reactance will depend largely on the frequency of the AC signal being applied. You have already seen that in an AC circuit containing an inductor, the voltage will lead the current by 90 degrees. In an AC circuit containing a capacitor, the current will lead the voltage by 90 degrees. Therefore, since the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees in a purely inductive circuit, and the voltage lags current by 90 degrees in a purely capacitance circuit, the effect of one of the reactances will tend to cancel the other. For example, let's assume that coil L1 has an inductive reactance of 100 ohms and capacitor C1 has a capacitive reactance of 50 ohms. The total reactance of this circuit would be 50 ohms of inductive reactance. This was obtained by subtracting the smaller reactance from the larger. Many circuits, however, will contain inductive reactants, capacitive reactants, and also resistance. Therefore, to determine total opposition to the flow of current in the series AC circuit, you must use the impedance formula. By assigning values to the components in our circuit, we are able to determine the circuit's impedance. We start by subtracting the capacitive reactants from the inductive reactants. Next, we square the resistive value and the reactive value, then add the two sums together. Next, we take the square root of this value. We see that the impedance of this circuit is 320.2 ohms. It is important to understand, however, that this formula will not apply to parallel LC, RC, RL, or RLC circuits. To calculate for the impedance of parallel connected components in an AC circuit, you must first find the current flow and then use Ohm's law Z equals E over I. We have assigned values to the components in our circuit. To calculate the impedance of this circuit, we must first calculate the current flow through each component. We do this by using Ohm's law I equals E over R. We see that there are 40 milliamps of current flowing through the inductive branch, 50 milliamps of current flowing through the resistive branch, and 25 milliamps of current flowing through the capacitive branch. Since the current flowing through the inductive branch and the capacitive branch are 180 degrees out of phase, we must subtract the smaller current from the larger current. This shows the total reactive current flow is 15 milliamps. Once we know the total reactive current flow and the current flow through the resistor, we use the formula square root of IR squared plus IX squared. 
Remember, IR squared is the current flow through the resistor, and IX squared is the reactive current flow. This will show there is a total current flow of 52.2 milliamps through the circuit. By using the formula Z equals E over I, we are able to calculate the impedance of this circuit as 192.3 ohms. Now you can see that determining the impedance of a parallel circuit involved more math functions than the simple series AC circuit.